All right, Photo 3, 4, let's talk a little bit more about manual exposure and turn you guys into experts in this thing. Let's get started. So step one for manual exposure, as you know, this is just review, is to set a starting ISO. Here are your good starting ISO points, everywhere from 100 to 6,400. Notice that anytime we want to freeze motion or use a deeper depth of field, we crank our ISO up one stop. This is going to make our digital sensor one stop more sensitive to light, meaning we can use more a more faster shutter speed, more faster shutter speed. We can use a faster shutter speed or a higher f-stop or smaller aperture because remember, we let in less light when we use a faster shutter speed or a smaller aperture. So by making the digital sensor one stop more sensitive to light, we can get better photos without uh, with less light coming into the camera. As we raise up the ISO, notice it's getting darker. It's now a cloudy day or we're shooting in the shade. Now cloudy day, shade, freezing motion or deeper depth of field. And guys, you may need to go higher than this. If you're shooting at F32, uh, 800 may not be enough. Again, these are just starting points. These aren't hard, stone cold, lead pipe locked ISOs that you have to use. Just good starting points. And honestly, if you're shooting at ISO 6400, you probably should not be trying to freeze motion or get a super deep depth of field uh, because you're somewhere really dark and you're not taking the right kind of photos. You can do it, uh, but you probably shouldn't be. So there's your starting ISOs for step one. You should probably memorize all of these. Step two is decide what kind of shutter speed or f-stop we're going to use. So if freezing motion is important, we're going to use a fast shutter speed. If we want to have blurry motion like cars driving down the highway or light painting or something like that, then we use a slow shutter speed, obviously. If we want a shallow depth of field, then we're going to use a big aperture, which is a low f-stop like f2.8. And if we want a deep depth of field, then we'll use a small aperture, uh, which is a high f-stop like f22 or something like that. What if I just want to take pictures of stuff? Then you know what? Set it to about 125. Maybe if it's really bright out, 250 and just go for it. Then you just worry about changing the aperture as needed. All right. Step number three is we've set our ISO. We've set our shutter speed or our f-stop based on the kind of photo we want to get. Now we're just going to take a photo. How does it look? If it's too bright, you got three choices. You can either use a faster shutter speed, a smaller aperture. Remember, a smaller aperture is going to make the hole smaller. That's going to let in less light and less light is going to make our photo darker, or we can lower our ISO. Now, changing the ISO does not change the amount of light that comes into the camera. We're not letting less light in when we use a lower ISO. We're just making our digital sensor a little bit less sensitive to light, so it doesn't need as much light to get the right photograph. And of course, the opposite is true. If it's too dark, we're going to use a slower shutter speed. We're going to have that shutter open for a longer amount of time, so more light can come in to make our photo brighter and then close. We're gonna use a bigger aperture, so our, a lower f-stop, like f2.8, is gonna be a bigger hole that's gonna let in more light. Or we're gonna use a higher ISO, meaning we're gonna make the digital sensor more sensitive to light so that it doesn't need as much light to get a good exposure. Of course, that is also going to increase the noise in the image. So how much do we change things, right? So this, go back here. We know if my photo's too bright, I got to use a faster shutter speed. Well, how much faster? Again, these are just generalizations and they're not cold, hard facts. They're just kind of a ballpark. If I said your photo's about one stop too bright, that means it's a little bright or dark. You can look at it and be like, it's not bad, but it's maybe a little bright. That's about one stop too bright or dark. Two stops too bright is it's pretty easy to look at and be like, you know what? That's definitely too bright. Definitely too bright. Um, it's not like three or more, which is like you look at it and you can't even tell what it's a photo of, right? It's so bright or so dark. That's three plus stops too bright or too dark. Two is you can still kind of tell what it is, but it's definitely too bright or too dark. And then three or more is you can't even really tell what it is. So why does that matter? Well, let's talk about this. Changing stops here. So let me move this camera here. Let's say... Your exposure was 1 over 1,000 at F8 at ISO 200. Great exposure. Your photo is one stop too bright. So that, of course, means if we go back, oops, go back, that our photo is a little too bright or a little too dark. Hmm? So in order to fix this, it's too bright, obviously. 
we need to let in less light. A photo would be too bright because there's too much light coming in or the digital sensor is too sensitive to light. It's more sensitive than it needs to be. So how are we going to fix this? Um, remember that a photo that's too bright, we need either a faster shutter speed. So we're at one over a thousand and it's one stop. So if we come down here and look at shutter speeds, we can't see there's no more shutter speeds, but we know it's too bright. So we need to let in less light and the next one's not here, but we're all pretty good at math. And we all remember that shutter speeds just double every time. So one over a thousand times two is 2000. So one over 2000 would solve the problem. Well, maybe we're like, well, crap, I don't know what a thousand times two is. I don't want to change the shutter speed. I'd rather change the aperture. Okay, great. It's too bright. So we need to make this hole smaller. So we're here at F8. We're just going to go to F11. Well, what if we're like, hey, I like one over a thousand. I like F8. In fact, what I want is less noise in my image. And I want to solve the fact that it's too bright. Well, we're at ISO 200. We can make our digital sensor less sensitive to light by lowering the ISO. So if we're at 200, we're going to lower it down to 100. So this is why we need to know stops. And we need to know how many stops too bright our photo is so that we know how much to change it. Let's look at another one. Let's say your exposure is 1 over 250 at f11 at ISO 800. Now our photo is three stops too dark. So we did not let enough light into the camera. So we need to let in more light. How are you going to fix that? Remember, if it's too dark, a slower shutter speed, a bigger aperture or a bigger hole, meaning a smaller f-stop, or we'd raise our ISO. So we were three stops too dark at 250. So we need to let in three stops more light. So that would be one, two, three. So one over 30 solves that problem. Well, you're thinking, hey, that's too slow of a shutter speed. I don't want to shoot at 1 over 30. I like 1 over 250. Not a problem. Let's make our photo brighter by changing the aperture or f-stop. We're at f11. It's too dark, so we need a bigger hole because bigger holes let in more light, and we need three stops, so we would go 1, 2, 3. F4 solves that problem for us. Well, what if we'd rather change our ISO? Maybe we want a real grainy image or we need the depth of field and we need the shutter speed so we can't afford to change these. We have no choice. We have to change our ISO. Three stops. So we're at 800. We need to make it brighter. So we're going to raise the ISO. We're going to make our digital sensor more sensitive to light. So one, two, three. ISO 6400. So all, any of those would be the right choice. You Honestly, you could combine all three of them, but that's a little complex. We'll get to that later. Let's look at another one. Uh, let's say your exposure is 1 over 30 at F2 at ISO 400. Your photo is now five stops too bright, which you wouldn't be able to tell. You'd just be like, whoa, it's way bright. But So we're just hypothetically saying five stops too bright. So we need to let in less light, obviously. So now let's get specific. What shutter speed would fix your photo? Okay, so we were at 1 over 30, and we were too bright, so we need to let in less light. So remember, less a faster shutter speed lets in less light. So we're just going to go five stops from 1 over 30. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 stops is 1 over 1,000. Woo! If you got that right, well done. Let's say your exposure was 1 over 1,000 at F11 at ISO 1600, and we really want to freeze motion. So freezing motion is important to us, which means... We can't change our shutter speed. Our photo is five stops too dark. It's too dark. We need to let in more light while well, freezing motion is important. And in order to change, to fix this by changing the shutter speed, we'd have to use a slower shutter speed, which we can't because we have to be able to freeze motion. So what f-stop would be right in this case? So we're at f11 and a bigger aperture or smaller f-stop is going to let in more light. It's going to solve the problem of it being too dark. So, one, two, three, four, five. F2 is the correct answer there. Let's say your exposure was 1 over 500 at F2 at ISO 6400. Your photo is now three stops too bright. We need to let in less light or we need to make the digital sensor less sensitive to light. In this case, we're not going to change the shutter speed or the f-stop. We're going to change the ISO. So what ISO would be correct? So we're at 6,400. We're going to use a lower ISO. We're going to make our digital sensor less sensitive to light. And we're going to do that three stops. So we're going to start at 6,400 and we're going to go one, 
two, three. So one over 500 at F2 at ISO 800 would solve that problem for us. All right, hopefully this helps you understand manual exposure a little bit more and how to change your exposure to get things looking correct. Uh, you honestly, you've probably already figured it out a little bit, but hopefully this just helps clarify things for you guys a little bit more and get you uh, ready for some of the really cool manual exposure assignments we're going to be doing coming up here.